So the roof, like I told us, is formed by the arched fiber of the transversus abdominis muscle and the internal oblique muscle. So this is the inguinal canal and this is the roof of this canal here. Then coming to the floor of the inguinal canal, the floor of the inguinal canal is formed by the inguinal ligament. So this is the inguinal ligament here, forming the floor of the inguinal canal. Good day everyone, my name is Mr. Chisum and today we'll be looking at the inguinal canal. We'll be looking at the inguinal canal. The inguinal canal is defined as an oblique muscular and aponeurotic passage that is found in the lower part of the anterior abdominal wall. It is an oblique muscular and aponeurotic passage that is found in the lower part of the anterior abdominal wall. So this is the inguinal canal. This is the inguinal canal here. And the inguinal canal is 4 cm in length. So this canal is 4 cm in length. So the inguinal canal extends, it extends from the deep inguinal ring down to the superficial inguinal ring. So the inguinal canal is directed downward. You can see it's directed downward, forward and medial. So it's moving downward from up to down, forward and there is moving medially. So this is it. Downward, forward and there is moving medially. Then the inguinal canal is found in both the male and female. But the male inguinal canal is larger than the, that of the female. So the inguinal canal has boundaries. It has the anterior wall, the posterior wall, the roof, the floor, and also the superficial and deep inguinal ring. So it has the anterior wall, the posterior wall, the roof, the floor, the superficial and deep inguinal ring. So we'll be looking at these fissures one after the other. So starting from the anterior wall. So as you can see here now, this is the inguinal canal here. And the anterior wall of the inguinal canal is formed by the skin. You can see the skin here forms the anterior wall of the inguinal canal and also the superficial fascia. The superficial fascia forms the anterior wall of the inguinal canal and the external oblique aponeurosis here also forms the anterior wall. So the skin, superficial fascia and external oblique aponeurosis forms the anterior wall. Then also the internal oblique muscle here also forms the anterior wall of the inguinal canal. So you can see the internal oblique muscle. It forms the anterior wall of the inguinal canal. So let's go over to the posterior wall of the inguinal canal. So the posterior wall of the inguinal canal is formed by the fascia transversalis. So this structure here is the fascia transversalis and also the perieta peritoneum. This is the perieta peritoneum. Also forms the posterior wall of the inguinal canal. Then coming to the media side, if you come to the media aspects, the cojoint tendon medially, the cojoint tendon here, also form the posterior wall of the inguinal canal. The transversus abdominus muscle and the internal oblique muscle join together at this point to form a tendon. And this is known as the cojoint tendon. So it also forms the posterior wall of the inguinal canal. So let's see the roof of the inguinal canal. This is still the inguinal canal. This is the, the inguinal canal. So you notice that the roof is formed by the action fiber 
this is the action fiber of the transversal subdominus muscle and the internal oblique muscle. So the roof is formed by the action fiber or the arched fiber of the internal oblique muscle and the transversus abdominis muscle. It forms the roof of the inguinal canal here. So the floor is formed by the inguinal ligaments here. The inguinal ligament forms the floor. And you know that the inguinal ligament is the thick continuation or the thick terminal ending of the external oblique aponeurosis. So that is it. Then coming to the contents of the inguinal canal. So the inguinal canal contains the spermatic cord. So this is the spermatic cord coming from the testes. You can see the spermatic cord coming from the testes. And the spermatic cord contains this spermatic cord now contains the it contains the ductus deferens, the continuation of the tail of the epididymis. It contains the ilioinguinal nerve. It also contains the cremas and testicular arteries. It contains the pampiniform venous plexus. So all of these are contained in the uh, spermatic cord. Then, if you notice, there is a muscle covering the spermatic cord. There is a muscle covering the spermatic cord. And this muscle is known as the cremasteric muscle. So the cremasteric muscle covering the spermatic cord helps to hang the content of the inguinal canal. It helps to suspend it. Just imagine vas difference or the doctor's difference, the ileal inguinal nerve, the pampiniform venous plexus, and the testicular artery. Just imagine them without something strong covering them. So the cremasteric muscle helps to cover these structures eh, and protect it from abdominal pressure. Then it also helps to suspend it. So that is it for the content of the inguinal canal. So we we'll look at finally the, the two rings of the inguinal canal. I told us that the inguinal canal contains the superficial ring and the deep ring. So this is known as the superficial ring of the inguinal canal. So you can see this outer ring here is known as the superficial ring of the inguinal canal. Then coming to the deep ring of the inguinal canal, the deep ring uh, is not something that can be seen from the anterior abdominal wall. You can see the length of the inguinal canal. This is the internal oblique muscle. So you can see the length of the inguinal canal. I'm using this now to check the length. Yeah? You can see the length of the inguinal canal. So coming to the deep inguinal ring, the deep inguinal ring will be found somewhere here. Somewhere here. Eh? This is it. So it will be found somewhere here. It cannot be seen from the anterior abdominal wall, but I've shown us where it can possibly be found. So somewhere here. That's where it can possibly be found. Coming to the greenical of the inguinal canal, we have the inguinal hyena. The inguinal hyena simply means the protrusion of the abdominal contents or protrusion of the small intestine into the inguinal canal. So the inguinal hyena is divided into two. We have the indirect inguinal hyena and the direct inguinal hyena. And the indirect inguinal hyena is commonly found in children. It simply means that the small intestine pierces or the small intestine passes through the deep and superficial inguinal ring and finds its way into the scrotum. And this causes a lot of pain. So the content or the small intestine that finds its way into the scrotum is normally pushed back to the abdomen. Then coming to the direct Inguinal hyena. Direct inguinal hyena is found in old people. 
eh, when the posterior wall of the inguinal canal becomes so weak, the small intestine finds its way into the inguinal canal through the weak posterior wall of the inguinal canal. So we've come to the end of this teaching. I will encourage us to subscribe to my YouTube channel, learn with Chisum Great. Like this video, share this video to your friends, and comment on this video. Thank you very much.